Hi, good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, okay? And um, today we will try to draw a monkey. But before we draw a monkey, I want to talk a little bit about them, okay? So monkey, you know, everybody know monkey. We see them everywhere. Uh, at the zoo, whenever you go to the zoo, most of the time you will see the monkey, right? And the monkey, they have a lot of different species of monkey. So in here, I just want to show you a different type of the monkey. Uh, some of them, we don't see them often, okay? So this is the first one you can tell that the mandrill monkey. And look at them. In their face, and uh, I, they have a different color there, huh? In purple and blue and red in there. So we don't see that monkey a lot, right? And they look good to me. So that's a one kind of the monkey, okay? And uh, we will go a few more monkeys. We see what we have here, okay? Oh, this is the golden snuff nose monkey. They said that the golden snuff nose. But basically, their face is blue. And their hair is not golden, right? So the monkey, you see, most of the time we talk monkey is just the gray color or black color. But basically, they really colorful here, right? And this, this one, I like the color of this one. And they look cute, huh? Okay. And so we will go to the next one and see because, you know, and you know, monkeys, they usually they like to eat fruit, leaf, nuts, and insect. So they can eat insect, just a small thing, right? Okay, so next one, we we'll see what is the next one here. Let's see. Okay, emperor tamarind. So this one, you see the fight, they have a Long here in the face right here. It doesn't look like monkey at all, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> it looks funny for me. <laughs> yeah, and this one is basically they small, they're not really big. And their name is a emperor tamarind. Okay, so you see three car monkey already, right? Okay, so let's see what we have next here. Okay, this one is the lion tail. Okay. <laughs> How many? I cannot say that name. Okay. So, but look, they look a little bit scary to me, yeah. right? They look yeah. scary. They not look colorful like the other one. So this one black, and they have a tail like the lion. So that's why they name them the lion tail. And you see their foot too. You see the foot with the hair around, just like the lion too. So that's why they have a name lion. And look at the eye. Wow. Okay, so this one looks scary. Uh -huh. And, <laughs> and hanging monkey. Wow. Okay, so you know, this one is a, one of the um, rarest monkey in the world. They're very rare, okay? And you only found that on the up southern coast of China. And in the 1970s, the species had a population less than 10, only less than 10. It means they are the danger will be extinct, right? So that's why um, the people try to save them. So they work hard to save this monkey, okay? And now they see the result is from up to 30 now. So more than 30, so that's a good deal, right? Because if it's only the whole work here, the big work only less than 10 of the high mon uh, monkeys, so that, that very rare. So, but right now it go up to more than 30, so that's a good thing. And look at the baby, see? The high monkey, and you see, their face, the eye, the mouth, the nose is really dark, black, and the, the, um, the hair, the monkey color is a uh, light brown, red, right? So they, they basically we see monkey is colorful, right? Okay. Almost so, looks like a reddish blonde, huh? Yeah, I like the color. Yeah. <laughs> I like the color. It's not scary like the lion. Not the other one. Yeah. Okay, so now we go out to see which one we can mark. 
Okay, so look at this. Oh. This is the smallest monkey in the world. Okay, you see your finger? Let's see my finger just like this. And that thing, you see, it can lay down on two fingers and look really, really small. Yeah. So they just a very, very thing and they look cute. Huh? And the name is a pygmy mammoset. Mm -hmm. And look at the eye. They have a big eye, huh? Look at that, it's really <laughs> cute. So it's so small because look at the finger just like this, right? Look at your finger and you will see. You can imagine how big, uh, how small the, this monkey is. So it's, they, yeah, they really, really small. It's almost like these toys they used to have and you could click them to different things. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're really yeah. small. They just like a toy. They make for the baby. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because our hand is not really big, right? Yeah. But this one can lay down on your finger like that. The whole body lay down on your finger like that. They're super small, just a little thing wow. like this. Wow, okay. So that to see, I don't know, do we still have one again? Oh, we still have one. Okay, so we go to the smallest monkey, very, very little, to the big gorilla. Okay. They kind of monkey, they relative monkey, but they call gorilla and they huge. They're really strong, right? And look at them, they're strong, they big. So this type of um, relative with monkey too, but it's bigger. Okay, and let's see, do we still have more? I don't remember. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Oh, we still have more. Okay, so Chimazi. Okay, when I hear the name Chimazi, I imagine that it might be big, right? But no, they're not really big. And this one, they like to live on the tree. Okay, most of Oh, yeah, most of the monkeys, they like to live on the tree, right? And look at this one. They like to live on the tree most of the time, okay? And this one, whatever black looks scary to me, right? The other monkey look cute, this one. And and last one is the chimpanzee. So we go gorilla, chimpanzee. And I think that's it, right? So actually, monkey have more than two, 260 species. But I just want to show you a few things, so uh, special, so you can see the difference between them, right? The color, the fact, the shape, things like that. And the gorilla and ape, they huge, big. Uh, and you know, between the gorilla ape and monkey, the monkey have a long tail. And the ape and gorilla, they don't have tail. Okay, so that's a little bit different there. And you know, monkey, one of the monkey uh, very close to human. So that's why uh, on the theory, long time ago, they said human come from the egg, right? Because you see our finger, our hand here, right? We have a thumbnail opposite with the other hand, right? Only monkey have that, okay? Only monkey have the opposite hand like us. No one, no, no animal in the world have a, a hand like us, the opposite. And this one very important because with this one, we can do a lot of things. Because the thumbnail opposite with the other one, so you can hold things, you can do a very little, little, little thing. And with the other animal, they cannot because their paw is different with us, right? They cannot hold, they cannot do anything at all. So only us and the monkey, right? Wow. Yes, only wow. us and the monkey. They have a hand like this like us. So, and later we will talk a little bit more about monkey very similar with us, okay? So talk about monkey. They eat what they eat. They eat fruit, right? And we usually said the monkey like banana, right? But honey, like I just preserved, the banana is, if the monkey eats too much banana, it's not good for them because it will too much sugar for them. Huh. They just like us, we don't want to want too much sugar in our body, right? So the monkey, the same thing, they don't like too much banana for them because it's not good for them, okay? But they like to eat food, they have leaves, nut, insect, all species, yes. So 
Monkey, they live on the ground and in trees. But most of the time we see the monkey, they just jumping from this tree to the other tree, right? They like to jumping around the tree and they like to live on the tree. Um, I think this is safer for them on the tree because not most animals can climb up on the tree and catch them, right? And they can run, they can jump really fast, so it's safer for them on the tree. So I think that's the reason, right? Okay. So what is the special of the monkey? Okay, they everywhere. You can find monkey everywhere on the tree, grassland, mountain, forest, and on the high plains, except for desert and ocean, right? <laughs> so monkey and monkey like to live like a group. They like to, to live together for a big group and they call the troop, okay? And most of them share the basic feature with the monkey. They have a forward facing eye. They have an eye socket. The grasping hand like this, they can grab things, okay? Nail, fingerprints, and last spread. They said monkey, very smart, okay? And they are very clever and social animal and they can run and live to free very easy and uh, monkey belong to the group of mammal from primates okay so and some kind of the monkey like apes like chimazi we see gorilla we just see that and most of the monkey do you know where they sleep most of them sleep on a tree okay they like to hang out on the tree, sleeping, uh, hanging, uh, playing together, palms on the branch, okay? And the other ones, they like to relax, lying down, sleeping on their front and back, okay? They lie down on the tree, sleep, relaxing. And the monkey, they can live for, let's see, 50 to 45 years. Actually, that's a long life, huh? Depends on what kind of the monkey, you know. Every monkey was different kind and they can live, uh, the, their life now is a little bit different, okay? And one thing of the monkey, you know, they like baby, okay? The Mother uh, monkey, they like, really like babies, so they like to kidnap the baby from the other monkey. For some reason, they really like it, okay? So, you know why? Because the mommy uh, monkey, they like to grooming. You see, every time you see on the TV show, whatever, with the monkey and baby, they, the mother monkey like to grooming the baby monkey. Okay, that they really, really like about that. That their favorite. So some mother monkey, they don't have baby. They go to keep that the other baby from the other monkey, so they can take care of them, grooming them, take care of them. So that's that's really interesting to know, right? Yes, just like that's why you know the uh, story touching, right? Mm -hmm. Tajan survived by the monkey, gorilla, right? right? Because they like baby. So when they see baby, they will take care of that, right? So that's the reason why we have Tajan with the model monkey, right? Yes. So that's right, okay? And the grooming is to strengthen their, their relationship, okay? So that's why they see the monkey do that all the time, uh -huh. okay? So monkey really useful to human you know why okay let me tell you okay human and chimps surprisingly share about 98.9 percent of their dna okay and red egg and human we have the same blood type okay a b a b and o okay so this one developed for more than 20 million years ago so there is something human 
in own work monkey share okay and in the theory they said chimpanzee and gorilla could donate blood for human okay so really and by percent we can donate blood for that too okay so because we have us and them have the same blood time so that's why we can share blood together okay so that's that's very good thing to know right okay and they make up around they very important because in the medical advance and polio vaccine the support system for premature babies and deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's disease okay does because a uh, monkey gorilla they similar to us they have the same blood time to us so the scientists use them to do the research and find out which one is the best for us to cure some of the disease or prevent some of the something else happen to human people we will use the monkey to do the research like that okay so that's very important for us the monkey okay and let's see every year in the research and testing they do about 2000 monkey annually okay for study how the brain function okay and researching related to human reproduction so monkey very helpful for us we really need them and they sound cute right okay so we know a little bit thing about the monkey already so now we will try to draw the monkey just a simple one okay so get ready people thank you okay you can see the monkey right and when you see monkey you see tree <laughs> because they like tree they live on tree right they need tree okay tree make them like they are living every day right so now we will draw a simple monkey so first of all we can just try a branch of the tree because monkey always hanging on the tree right so just a little right here just like the friends. Okay. So just like that for them to hanging on, right? Okay. So that's the friend of the tree. And now the monkey, he will hanging in there. So for the moment, we just draw the face first, right? So with the face, let's see how we draw that. Uh, let's see right here, just like this, a half of the circle, right? okay and then this one is a little bit small the other face is a little bit bigger like this just like a pair huh okay and the monkey have a round ear right so we have a ear right here here right here okay can you see that okay and now we like this okay one more on this side okay so we have the head and let's see just put some eye and nose in there so it looks like the monkey huh okay so with the eye you can just do the circle here okay Everything circle, it's easy for you. Just a dot right there for the nose. Okay. And one there. Okay. And this he's smiling. Okay. <laughs> he's happy. The monkey is happy. Okay. So now we will see. He hanging on a tree. So let Make his arm go up here. One like this. Okay. 
The other one, right here. Okay. And this one, uh, just hanging right here. Okay. And one more line right here. So we have two hands, right? And now we go to the body. Okay. The body one on this side, one on this side. Okay. And now you see monkey, they have a long leg, long hand. Okay. So that's why they uh, can jump and run really fast. Okay. So this is because hang, hanging just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one more just like this one. Okay. Done. Okay, now we right here, we just have a line right there. One line right here. And you know, they are on the left very thin, they're not fast except for the gorilla. Okay, and this one we can go right there. This one go down here. Okay, and see, remember the hand, they have a different thumb, they're opposite, right? So one right here, one right there, and this one just like this, this one the same, one right here. Okay, and this one the same, one there, one here. Okay, and because there's usually it's right here, there are colors different right there. Usually, this one have a different color with the hair right here. Okay, you have a monkey, right? Okay, so this one hanging here, so we just have that hand somewhere right here. Okay, and that's not easy, right? And you can have a sun like this for the hand. This one is big, so. Okay, and you can have some leaf here. Because the tree. So you have some leaf. Okay. Now we have your monkey. That easy, right? Okay. So I hope you enjoy that, and um, next time we will do something else different. Okay, okay. Thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoy that, and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome job. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to do Okay. Thank you so much. So I bet that was pretty fun watching this tweet a monkey and talk to you about the monkeys. So until we're going to have story time come in, until that happens, we wanted to talk about a few safety things. Um, some of the things we have in place here at Elwin is the physical and social distancing. So we want you to be aware that when you are um, here at Elwyn, we need you to keep at least six feet or more away from your, um, the people that are around you and so forth. So they're saying um, physical distancing is a practice of at least staying six feet away from others to avoid catching any such diseases as the COVID-19. As noted, social distancing is a term used earlier in the pandemic, as many people have stayed home to prevent the spread of the virus. Now, as communities are reopening, 
people are in public more often. So that they are in public more often, we're asking for physical distancing. Is used to stress the importance of maintaining space when you're in public areas. So we're also um, here at um, Elwin, we practice keeping our masks, our shields, and everything on. Um, we really are, you know, making sure you keep your mask and keep your distance. And so we're saying wear your mask, how can a surgical mask protect you? If worn properly, the surgical mask is meant to help block large particles or droplets, as they're called, splashes, sprays, or splatter that may contain germs, viruses, or bacteria. Keeping it from reaching your mouth and nose. Surgical masks may also help reduce exposure of your saliva or respiratory secretions to others. So not only is it protecting me, it's also protecting others that are around me. Um, so, and here at Elwin, when um, we do get here, some people do wear fabric um, masks and stuff, but we are more comfortable with switching out for the disposable ones and they're, um, this way they can be changed if they're soiled or different things like this while you're here in the um, facility. So the right way to wear your mask is to make sure always that your nose is inside your mask. Um, the mask is around your chin. Um, ripped or dirty masks, we always replace them. And not wearing a mask are most effective when people, everyone is wearing them. So we always make sure that if you are inside Elwin, we need you to wear your mask. That is one of the safety skills that we have here. Miss um, Grace is here, but Miss Grace, can I help you help me get one of the 895s in there, please? Thank you. It's inside the closet there. So it says germs are everywhere. They can get on our hands and items we touch during the daily activities and make us sick. So as the day goes on throughout the day, we are constantly washing our hands with soap and water. And sometimes we'll, you know, after the soap and water, we'll do the hand sanitizer also. Depending on projects or different things that have been going on, you know, there's key times that we really, really wash our hands. Would you like me to demonstrate this? Yes. So Miss Miss Grace is going to show us at key times. Um, so this is what we have as the N95. Mm -hmm. And this mask can be worn also. So the mask that I have on, the mask that Miss Grace has on and this mask are the masks that um, we wear here at Elwyn. And, and I don't mind putting them both on. Okay, so she's gonna put that over because I don't mask. wanna take this one off. And this is a great way that we're teaching and showing how she's protecting herself and also protecting me too. And also with the keeping six feet apart to yes. as much as we can, yes. we do that. And if you were here, you would see that the clients don't sit any closer yes. at their tables than six feet. And they have um, even have some plastic shields in between, in them. between them. So the N95 mask, if you look at it closely, you see it's actually a couple of thick layers of paper here. Uh, I see three layers. One of them might be even more filtery. There's a piece of metal. You might go, metal, what's that for? And I'll show you. And in case you're thinking, oh, that metal's going to hurt me, there's a little foam behind it. So it won't hurt you. So these ones, instead of going behind the ears, these go over the head. And then uh, actually both of these go over your head. And my, and my got my eyes a little, so one goes lower and the other goes higher. And then this piece of metal, mm -hmm. This you want to kind of, if, if you have the blue mask like I already had on, there's a really thin piece of metal in it too. What you want to do is kind of maybe form that around your nose or right. it's supposed to help to keep the shape. The paper ones have a little metal in them. And if you do take that and kind of form it around your nose, that will he help your mask to stay up. Because we have a lot of people here. I'm going to take this off just because okay. it's hard to talk for you. And not only that, you were giving me a key term this morning about 
Even people that wear glasses. Oh, yes. Can you demonstrate how much easier it is to put the glasses over your mask than if under? A lot of people might have their glasses on and put their mask on. Well, first of all, that's not, not creating covering. a good seal. But most of what happens is when you do this and you're breathing, the air will come up warm and it'll steam up your glasses. <laughs> so what I find, when you want to put it on, take your little, these are the ones that we give out at L1. So they're all going to have a little metal in here. It's very little and it's all padded. And if you kind of pinch that around your nose, that's going to help your mask to stay up. The biggest problem we seem to have here is not that somebody rips their mask off. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> but it's uh, that their mask wants to slip down. Of course it does. So that helps to hold it up. And if you put your glasses on over, that also kind of helps hold it in place. And again, now it's all kind of sealed around my face, which is very important. It doesn't do any good if I can go <laughs> and blow out of it. And then on my, if I put it on the outside of the mask, my glasses don't get steamed up. Yes. And I can see, which is really important because I can't see without them. <laughs> so uh, the N95 mask, if anybody comes in and for some reason they are concerned and want to request that, we do have those here. But when the clients come in in the morning, we, we get everybody masks. a nice fresh mask. And if you come in with your pretty little fabric mask, we ask you to put it back into your belongings till the end of the day. And then we you use this mask. 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 And then like uh, like Carmen was saying, if you know, we have some people, uh, maybe they talk a lot and then maybe there some moisture comes out of their mouth. Right. And I've seen the mask kind of get damp. Well, so we, we say, okay, mouth. here's a new one for you. It doesn't cost you anything. It's easy to put on and wear. I say it's an easy way to keep us safe. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Yes, so you really talk. quick, we wanted to say if you are at home or before you do come to Elwyn, we'd like you to always keep the Elwyn family and keep yourself safe. So we ask for people to watch for symptoms. And recommendations from the CDC the list of symptoms include, but not all, are fevers and chills, if you have a cough, if you have shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, if you feel fatigued and you feel like you need to sleep a lot, you know, more usual than what you're usually doing, you have muscle and body aches, if you have a headache, um, new loss of taste and smell, like if you're eating and you can't taste what you're doing or, you know, we have our fabulous smells and you can't smell that, that's something that needs to be safe. If you're feeling like you have a sore throat, if you feel like you're having a sore throat, um, congestion or runny nose, if you have a runny nose or you're feeling congested, that's another sign. If you're feeling nauseated or if you're vomiting, those are things. And one other thing is diarrhea. Those are some symptoms, but not all. But if you're feeling any of those at any time, as we said, and we do go over these with the clients when they're here, daily we have what we call the um, health safety class. And we explain to things that if they're going through certain things or they're feeling a certain way, Please let a parent, a provider, or someone that can help them feel better, let them know in advance. So that way, you know, it keeps, again, our L1 family safe and it keeps them safe. And um, we just want to remember um, and remind everybody to stay safe, keep your mask on, wash your hands a lot. Um, Hey, Carmen, I got a question for you. Sure. Sometimes I get some of those symptoms. If I got a head cold, my head will get out like that. Uh -huh. And I'll just like be having a hard time, maybe. And so if it's a cold, why shouldn't I just come to work? And because, you know, colds, they're not such a big deal. I'm wearing a mask, so it's probably not contagious. And you know, why don't I just wait and kind of see how it comes out during the day? You know, before that used to probably be okay to do that and come in and what have you. But with the COVID going on right now, it's safer to be safe than to be sorry. So if you're having a headache or your nose is stuffy or different things like that, 
Um, as we said, we're not doctors, so we don't know. So the safest thing is to check with your doctor and see if it may just be a head cold. But then that way you've kept yourself safe and you've also kept your Elwin family safe. So you're saying I can have these symptoms and I'm saying maybe it's not COVID. Hopefully not, right? Right. But, right. Uh, but we don't know. No. Like you say, we're not doctors. Right. So and I know the only way we can really check is, you know, maybe if you come and look at, okay, we take your temperature. But you might not have a temperature right when it first starts. Exactly. And then and not so, only some that. Some people, my daughter had the COVID, but she never got a temperature. See, and now not only that, <laughs> COVID tests are free. Check with CVS, Walgreens, Urgent Cares, and different things like that. You can get a test done free. So, again, it's always safer than sorry. Thank so, you. thank you. And thanks for your help with that. So, we're going to have Miss Grace read to us for a little bit. You okay with that? I don't know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So, we're going to have you pull your chair over. Yeah, I can't stand on here have to read and hold the book and everything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I have been reading in some of the live streams so far from this book, wonderful book, Charlotte's Web. A lot of you have uh, heard the story or seen a cartoon movies of it. We were watching the cartoon movie of it in the other room. You can find that at YouTube for free. And it's a really great story. It's by E.B. White which I was just tickled pink when I found out it stands for Elwin Brooks White. So his name is Elwin. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah, I've never even heard a person with a name like that. So today we are up, well, we're about halfway through the book, and we're up to chapter nine, The Miracle. Now, last night, Charlotte was working on her web, and she tore out a section of it and then went back to work and she was still at work after midnight. So this chapter starts. The next day was foggy. Everything on the farm was dripping wet. The grass looked like a magic carpet. The asparagus patch looked like a silver forest. On foggy mornings, Charlotte's web was truly a thing of beauty. This morning, each thin strand was decorated with dozens of tiny beads of water. The web glistened in the light and made a pattern of loveliness and mystery, <clears throat> excuse me, like a delicate veil. Even Lurvy, the hand, ranch hand, who wasn't particularly interested in beauty, noticed the web when he came up with the pig's breakfast. He noted how cleverly it showed up and he noted how big and carefully it was built. And then he took another look and saw something that made him set his pail down. There, in the center of the web, neatly woven in block letters, was a message. It said, some pig. See here in capital letter, some pig. Uh, just in case you're not familiar with this, spider webs do not usually have messages in them. Lurvy felt weak. He brushed his hand across his eyes and stared harder at Charlotte's web. Here's the web saying, some pig. That is not usual for webs. You knew that though, right? I'm seeing things, he whispered. He dropped to his knees and uttered a short prayer. Then, forgetting all about Wilbur's breakfast, he walked back to the house and called Mr. Zuckerman. I think you'd better come down to the pig pen, he said. What's the trouble, asked Mr. Zuckerman. Anything wrong with the pig? Uh, not exactly, said Lurvy. Come and see for yourself. The two men walked silently down to Wilbur's yard. Lurvy pointed to the spider's web. Do you see what I see, he asked. Zuckerman stared at the writing on the web. Then he murmured the words, Some Big. Then he looked at Lurvy. Then they both began to tremble. Charlotte, sleepy after her night's exertions, smiled as she watched. <laughs> Wilbur came and stood directly under the web. Oh, good timing, Wilbur. Some pig, muttered Lurvy in a low voice. Some pig, whispered Mr. Zuckerman. 
They stared and stared for a long time at Wilbur. Then they stared at Charlotte. You don't suppose that spider, began Mr. Zuckerman, but he shook his head and didn't finish the sentence. Instead, he walked solemnly back up to the house and spoke to his wife. Edith, something has happened, he said in a weak voice. He went to the living room and sat down and Mrs. Zuckerman followed. I've got something to tell you, Edith, he said. You'd better sit down. Mrs. Zuckerman sank into a chair. She looked pale and frightened. Edith, he said, trying to keep his voice steady, I think you had best be told that we have a very unusual pig. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> a look of complete bewilderment came over Mrs. Zuckerman's face. Homer Zuckerman, what in the world are you talking about? She said. This is a very serious thing, Edith, he replied. Our pig is completely out of the ordinary. Well, what's unusual about the pig, asked Mrs. Zuckerman, who was beginning to recover from her scare. What's unusual about the pig? Well, I, I don't really know yet, said Mr. Zuckerman, but we have received a sign. Edith, it's a mysterious sign. A miracle has happened on this farm. There is a large spider's web in the doorway of the barn cellar, right over the pig pen. And when Lurvy went to feed the pig this morning, he noticed the web because it was foggy. And you know how a spider's web looks when a very distant fog. And right spring in the middle of the web, it said the words, some pig. The words were woven right into the web. They were actually part of the web, Edith. I know because I have been down there and I have seen it. It says some pig, just as clear as can be. There could be no mistake about it. A miracle has happened and a sign has occurred here on earth, right on our farm. And we have no ordinary pig. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, it seems to me that you're a little off. It seems to me that we have no ordinary spider. Oh, no, said Zuckerman. It's the pig. That's unusual. It says so right there in the middle of the web. Maybe so, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Just the same. I intend to have a look at that spider. Well, it's just a common gray spider, said Zuckerman. They got up together and they walked down to Wilbur's yard. You see, Edith? It's just a common gray spider. Wilbur was pleased to receive so much attention. Lurvy was still standing there, and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman, all three, stood there for about an hour, reading the words on the web over and over and watching Wilbur. Charlotte was delighted with the way her trick was working. She sat without moving a muscle and listened to the conversation of the people. When a small fly blundered into the web just beyond the word pig, Charlotte quick, dropped down quickly, rolled the fly up, and carried it out of the web. After a while, the fog lifted, the web dried off, and the words didn't show up so plainly. The Zuckermans and Lurvy walked back to the house. Just before they left the pig pen, though, Mr. Zuckerman took one last look at Wilbur. You know, he said in an important voice, I've thought all along that that pig of ours was extra good. He's a solid pig. The pig is as solid as they come. Whoopsie. You notice how solid he is around the shoulders, Lurvy? Sure, sure, I do, said Lurvy. I've always noticed that pig. He's quite a pig. He's long and he's smooth, said Zuckerman. That's right, agreed Lurvy. He's as smooth as they come. He is some pig. When Mr. Zuckerman got back to the house, he took off his work clothes and put on his best suit. Then he got into his car and drove to the minister's house. He stayed for an hour and explained everything to the minister that a miracle had happened on the farm. So far, said Zuckerman, only four people on earth know about this miracle, myself, my wife, Edith, my hired man, Lurvy, and now you. Well, don't tell anybody else, said the minister. 
We don't know what it means yet, but perhaps if I give thought to it, I can explain it in my sermon next, sun sermon next Sunday. There could be no doubt about it that you have a most unusual pig. I intend to speak about it in my sermon and point out the fact that this community has been visited with a wondrous animal. By the way, does the pig have a name? Well, yes, said Mr. Zuckerman. My little niece calls him Wilbur. She's a rather queer child, full of notions. She raised the pig on a bottle, and I bought him from her when he was a month old. He shook hands with the minister and left. Secrets, secrets are hard to keep. You guys have secrets, right? Somehow they always get out, don't they? So long before Sunday came around, the news of the the news spread all over the county. Everybody knew that a sign had appeared in a spider's web on Zuckerman Place. Everybody knew that the Zuckermans had a wondrous pig. People came from miles around to look at Wilbur and to read the words on Charlotte's web. Here's a picture of them. They're coming from all over the place and standing outside there to read the web and look at that fabulous pig. Uh, Sorry, the Zuckerman's driveway was full of cars and trucks from morning till night. Fords and Chevys and Buick Roadmasters and GMC pickups and Plymouths and Studebakers and Packards and DeSotos with gyromatic transmissions and Oldsmobiles with rocket engines and Jeep station wagons and Pontiacs. The news of the wonderful pig spread clear up into the hills and farmers came rattling down in buggies and buckboards to stand hour after hour at Wilbur's pen, admiring the miraculous animal. All they said that they, they all said that they had never seen such a pig before in all their lives. So when Fern told her mother that Avery had tried to hit the Zuckerman spider with a stick, Mrs. Arable was so shocked that she sent Avery to bed without any supper as punishment. In the days that followed, Mr. Zuckerman was so busy entertaining visitors that he neglected his farm work. He wore his good clothes all the time now, cut right into them when he got up in the morning. Mrs. Zuckerman prepared special meals for Wilbur. Lurvy shaved and got a haircut. And his principal farm duty was to feed the pig while people looked. Mr. Zuckerman ordered Lurvy to increase Wilbur's feedings from three meals a day to four meals a day. Deal. The Zuckermans were so busy with visitors, they forgot about other things on the farm. That can't be good. The blackberries got ripe, and Mrs. Zuckerman failed to put up any blackberry jam. The corn needed hoeing, and Lurvy didn't find time to hoe it. On Sunday, the church was full. The minister explained the miracle. He said, that the words on the spider's web prove that human beings must always be on the watch for the coming of wonders. All in all, the Zuckerman's pig pen was the center of attraction. Fern was happy for she felt that Charlotte's trick was working and that Wilbur's life would clearly be saved. But she did find that the barn wasn't all that pleasant as it used to be. There were too many people there. She liked it better when she could be alone with her friends and the animals. So that brings us to chapter 12, and it is called A Meeting, a Meeting of Whom. One evening, a few days after the writing had appeared in Charlotte's Web, the spider called a meeting, oh, animal meeting, and she called a meeting of all the animals in the barn cellar. I shall begin by calling Roll. Wilbur? Here, said the pig. Gander? Here, 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 said the gander. You sound like three ganders, muttered Charlotte. Why can't you just say here? Why do you have to repeat everything? It's my idio, idio, idiosyncrasy, replied the gander. Goose, said Charlotte. Here, 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 said the goose. Charlotte glared at her. Goslings, one through seven, uh oh. 
哔哔哔，哔哔哔，哔哔哔，哔哔哔，哔哔哔，哔哔哔，哔哔哔。Said the goslings. This is getting to be quite a meeting," said Charlotte. Anybody would think we had three ganders, three geese, and twenty-one goslings. Sheep, yeah," answered the sheep all together. Lambs, yeah," sounds kind of like a bah," answered the lambs all together. Templeton, no answer. Templeton, no answer. Templeton's the rat. Well, we're all here except the rat," said Charlotte. I guess we can proceed without him. Now, all of you must have noticed what's been going on around here. And in the last few days, there have been many people come by. The message. I wish this would stop. Sorry. The message that I wrote in my web praising Wilbur has been received. The Zuckermans have fallen for it, and so has everybody else. Zuckerman thinks that Wilbur is an unusual pig, and therefore he won't want to eat him. I dare say my trick will work, and Wilbur can be spared. Hooray! cried everybody. Well, thank you very much," said Charlotte. Now I called this meeting in order to get suggestions. I need new ideas for the web. People are already getting sick of reading the word "some pig," and if anybody can think of another mess message or remark, I'll be glad to weave it into the web. Any suggestions for a new slogan? How about "Pig Supreme"? Asked one of the lambs. Oh, the pig will turn the pig. That's not from the lambs. That's from me. Ooh, no good," said Charlotte. It sounds like a rich dessert, "Pig Supreme." How about terrific, terrific, terrific? Asked the goose. Cut that down to one terrific, and it will do very nicely," said Charlotte. I think terrific might impress Zuckerman. But Charlotte said, "Wilbur, I'm not terrific." That doesn't make a particle of difference," replied Charlotte. "Not a particle. People believe almost anything they see in print. Does anybody here know how to spell terrific?" I think," said the gander. "It's T double E double R double R double I double F double I double E double C C C C. What kind of an acrobat do you think I am?" said Charlotte in disgust. "I would have to have Saint Vitus's dance to weave a word like that into my web." "Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry," said the gander. He really can't help it but to talk like that. When the oldest sheep spoke up, I agreed that there should be something new written in the web if Wilbur is to be spared, and if Charlotte needs help in finding words, I think she can get it from our friend Templeton. The rat visits the dump regularly and has access to old magazines. He can tear out bits of advertisements and bring them here to the barn cellar, and Charlotte can have something to copy. Good idea," said Charlotte. "But I'm not sure Templeton will be willing to help. You know he is always looking out for himself. He never thinks of the other fellow. And just to pause for a second, here are the animals having their meeting. Your Charlotte is up at the top there, and the pig and the geese and the hens, but no Templeton. The rest. Well, I bet I can get him to help," said the old sheep. Sheep. I'll appear to his baser instincts, of which he has a lenty. Baser instincts are kind of like thinking of yourself. Every, here he comes now. Everybody, keep quiet while I put the matter up to him. The rat entered the barn the way he always did, creeping along close to the wall. What's up? He asked, seeing the animals all assembled. We're holding a directors' meeting," replied the old sheep. "Well, break it up," said Templeton. Meetings bore me, and the rat began to climb up a rope that hung against the wall. Look," said the old sheep. "Next time you go to the dump, Templeton, bring back a clipping from a magazine. Charlotte needs new ideas so she can write messages in her web and save Wilbur." "Eh, let him go," said the rat. "I should worry." "Oh, you'll worry all right when next winter comes," said the sheep. You'll worry all right on a zero morning next January when Wilbur is not here. 
and nobody comes down worth a nice pail of warm slops to pour into the trough. Wilbur's leftover food is your main source of food, Templeton. You know that. Wilbur's food is your food. Therefore, Wilbur's destiny and your destiny are closely linked. If Wilbur isn't here and his trough stands empty day after day, you'll grow so thin we can look right through your stomach and see objects on the other side. Like those butterflies with the clear wings. Temple, temple to whiskers quivered. Well, maybe you're right, he said. I'm making a trip to the dump tomorrow afternoon. I'll bring back a magazine clipping if I can find one. Oh, thank you, said Charlotte. The meeting is now adjourned. I have a busy evening ahead of me. I've got to tear my web apart and turn off my alarm. And <laughs> stop it. I'm almost at the end of the chapter. My alarm goes off. So I'll bring back a magazine clipping if I can find one. Oh, that right. Uh, Charlotte says, Tank, I've got to tear my web apart and write terrific. Wilbur blushed, but I'm not terrific, Charlotte. I'm just about average for a pig. Well, you're terrific as far as I'm concerned, replied Charlotte sweetly, and that's what counts. You're my best friend, and I think you're sensational. Now stop arguing and go to get some sleep. So... Next will be Lucky Chapter 13, and it is called Good Progress, and we'll tackle that next time I come in to read you some story. Okay, guys? Thanks for joining us, and also, I see up behind me, there's a little reminder that we are still looking for some awesome people to work here at Elwyn. Uh, maybe you have a cousin or a friend or a brother or sister that lives in the area, and maybe they like it when they come to see you because you're a specially great person. So maybe they'd be good working with people too. And we would love to give them a job here at Elwyn so that we can have more friends to help us take care of you guys and so that we can have a better team. So we're always looking for people that are really, really nice and patient. And you know what? That's pretty much most of the qualifications. Uh, you don't have to, like, be a computer expert or, you know, know how to work heavy machinery. You just have to be good with people and really care about them. So if you know somebody, let them know that we're hiring. And, you know, you don't have to give them the link or anything. Just let them know. Elwin is hiring. They can always just look us up in the phone book. <laughs> like those exist, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they can always find out where Elwin is and what we're about on the interweb. And then they can say, hey, I heard you were hiring. And we'll be, yes, let me tell you where to get an application for right online. And we would really love it if some of these people that you knew came here to work with us because we know they'll be super special. So thanks again for listening and, and our wonderful safety lesson from Carmen. And uh, just so you know, this N95 mask is mine now because even though I put it on over my mask, I can have some little cooties that got on it. And we don't share masks, no matter how pretty your friend's mask is, uh, that's their mask. And uh, if you want to have a pretty mask to wear at home, awesome. There's a more you wear your mask when you go out in the public, people the see that you're being safe. So that's good. When you wear a mask, I feel, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just so you know, I'm fully vaccinated. When I go into a store, many times they say, you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated, that's cool. But I think to myself, I mean, you can't look at me and see how I'm vaccinated. You don't know, have a big V on my forehead. Yeah, I could get that tattooed on my, no. Um, but, but I do care about people, so I did get the vaccines. And when I go into the grocery store, I wear a mask because I want people to know that I care that if I had a germ, I wouldn't be giving it to them. That's the way I look at it. It's just a matter of politeness and caring for other people at this point. So wear your masks when you go out, and we'll be happy to give you one of these sweet ones with the little metal on the nose when you guys come here. And we miss all of you that aren't here with us so much. We will be happy when you can come back. And we love all of you, and we hope that you're having a great day today. Now, 
Carmen's going to end this for me. Sorry. <laughs> but I will read you more Charlotte's Web next time. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Again, don't forget, be safe. Um, follow, you know, wearing your mask, like she said. Wash hands. Washing our hands. Um, stay home stay when you're home sick. When you're not feeling well. Keep your distance. Um, really practice, practice that. And it will truly keep, like we said, our Elwin family and all of your family and everyone around you safe. And that is the most important thing that we want to make sure you guys stay safe. Have a good Thursday and we'll see you on Tuesday. Take care. Good job, my friend. Good job. <laughs>